Hello. Uh, today I'm going to talk about how you get the best line through a set of data, three squares method. And I'm going to use real data. Um, we, uh, I uh, measured the mass of uh, drops coming from a, a dropper. Um, zero, five, 10, and 15 drops, and the mass was measured on an analytical balance. And um, here's a plot of the data here. And uh, let me, uh, just by eyeballing it, um, draw a line through these data. So this is the eyeball method. And you try and get some points below the line and some above. And uh, then you take the slope, and that would be a method of getting the uh, relationship, a linear relationship going through the origin. And the relationship is y, which is the mass, equals a times x is the number of drops. So a would be the number, the mass per drop, all right? And here I've guessed the value of a, but I'll, I'll talk about that in a second, all right? Um, so the question is, how do you find the best line? And the best line is the one that makes the sum of the squares of the distance between the point and the line a minimum, all right? So with a equal 0.041, uh, the calculated um, mass is shown in this column. What I've done is I'm multiplying the number of drops times a, all right? And um, the difference between the measured and the calculated is called the residual. And if your a is pretty good, uh, some of the values will be negative, some will be positive. And if you square the residual, r squared, uh, you'll always get a positive number, and you sum them up, and that's called the sum of the residual squared. And um, you can see that if I change this to 0.04, it gets bigger, all right? So I'm going in the wrong direction, all right? And okay, now, uh, another way to do this is to actually calculate R squared based on different values of A. And here I have a plot of R squared as a function of A. And you can see that at some point it reaches a minimum, and that point is 0 0.042, all right, on this graph here, all right. So um, that's one thing you can do, uh, but it's kind of cumbersome to do. Another thing you can do is use calculus. Let's talk about that. All right, determination of the best slope using calculus. This is called the least squares method. The equation is y equals ax, a line going through the origin. a is the slope, y is the mass, x is the number of drops. Okay, so here are our data. Let's say here's our cal y calculated, here's the r value and the r squared. So the relationship that r squared is really the sum of the differences squared between the measured value and the calculated value. And the calculated value is ax squared. Okay, so the best value for a is the one that makes the sum of the squares of the residuals a minimum. Okay, so therefore, the derivative of the sum of the squares with respect to a is equal to zero. So let's do that derivative using calculus. So we're taking the derivative with respect to a of the sum of the r squared values. That's the difference between calculated and experimental squared. So we always get a positive value. So this is the derivative that we're taking, the measured values minus a x. That's some that whole thing squared with respect to a. All right, now there's only one a in this expression. So now when you take the derivative, you're going to get 2 times 
x, right? actually minus 2 times x. Uh, but uh, it, it, it doesn't matter. You're, you're going to set it equal to 0, all right? So I, I put 2xi times the yi minus ax to the 1 power. And if you expand this, you'll get 2xiyi minus 2a x i squared, you can cancel out the two, and solving for a, this is what you get, that the best value of a is the sum of the number of drops times the experimental mass, that sum, divided by the sum of the number of drops over all the measurements. So let's take a look at how this works out. Okay, so try and remember this. Okay, so we're going to go back to sheet one, and I'm going to um, take a look over here. So I'm going to bring this part of the worksheet over. So here are my xi, xi values, the number of drops squared. There were five, that's 25. There's 10, 100, all right, et cetera. And this is the sum of the number of drops times the mass. And the expression was, um, well, let's find it on the next page. It's this here. All right. And the answer is 0.042, and it's uh, math, grams per drop. All right. So let's take a look if it agrees with the plot. And you can see it does. And another way to do this, of course, is to uh, use Excel. Whoops. And go to trend line. I'm going to go to more options. Okay, now uh, over on the right screen, which you can't see, I'm going to take a linear. Um, I'm going to set the intercept to zero and display the equation and the r squared value on the chart. Let's make this a little bigger. And you can see the, the equation is y, which is the mass, equals 0.042x. And it gives you a correlation coefficient of 0.9973. So this is the best line of that form, all right? Now, if you did this with a, an intercept that is not necessarily zero, uh, you, you'd have two parameters. You'd have a slope and an intercept, and you'd probably get a better correlation coefficient. But, uh, you know, theoretically, it should go through the origin. So I hope that's helpful in understanding the least squares method uh, for a set of data going through the origin. Thank you for your attention. I'll see you next time.